Hello there, my friends. Uh, welcome to my very, what is this, my, now this will be my fourth vlog. Yes, yeah, so this is my fourth vlog. I'm sorry I haven't done any vlogging in a hot minute. I've been so busy lately. But now it's time to get back to my antics. Uh, so this vlog, we're going to do something a little different. So we're going to get off the whole savory stuff. We're going to try something. We're going to go to the desserts. So tonight, we are going to make a yellow cake. Yellow cake is, in my opinion, the very best cake to start off with when if you're quite new to the cake making arena. Uh, this is a really good cake to start off with. It's really easy, very simple, but very delicious. So we have a few ingredients here. All right, so we have half a cup of room temperature butter. It has to be room temperature. It cannot be cold. It cannot be hot and melted. It has to be room temperature butter. And then we have a cup of sugar here. Uh, we have six egg yolks. Well, it looks like it's five, but the sixth one kind of like broke out a little bit, but that's okay. We, as long as it gets in the cake, that's all that really matters. And then we have three tablespoons of oil. This is uh, coconut oil here, but you can use any type of oil you want. It really doesn't matter. You can use peanut, uh, coconut, like I'm using, you can use vegetable, canola, any oil works as long as it's not like toasted sesame seed oil because then that become, kind of becomes gross. All right, and then we have a three quarter cups of milk. This is whole milk. For cakes, you always want to use uh, whole milk. Um, just typically because high fat really causes high moisture for cakes. So the more fat, the better. And then here, we also have, this is our flour mixture. Okay, so this here is uh, one quarter, one and three quarter cups of cake flour. You can use all purpose flour if you do not have cake flour, it is okay. Um, this is also, uh, I also sifted it with a tablespoon of baking powder. Keyword powder, not soda, baking powder. With half a teaspoon of salt and I also use a quarter teaspoon of cornstarch just to give it an extra bit of moisture. All right, so we have our butter in here as whisk here. Um, what I'm using here is, of course, a stand mixer. Um, of course, if you don't have a stand mixer, you can always use a traditional bowl. You can use a large spoon. Uh, I prefer to use something with the whisk. So, of course, if you're going to be using a paddle, uh, this is if the paddle attachment you need to use is this whisk right here. So, I'm going to add the sugar in a second, but hold on, we're going to start this. So we're just gonna go at low speed. We do not need to go fast or anything. It's not necessary. And then we're just gonna slowly add the sugar. You don't wanna add the sugar all at one time. In the culinary field, we have something that's called shocking. And you know, the butter can only absorb so much at a time. So we don't wanna add everything in all at once. Oh yes, I see that's getting all nice and fluffy there. And as you can see, that sugar and butter is becoming well incorporated though. But one thing a lot of people make mistakes on is that they don't scrape the bowl. So you gotta make sure you scrape your bowl uh, cause the whisk doesn't get every corner of the bowl. And it's best you use a uh, rubber spatula cause it really cleans those edges off. All right, just wanna make sure I get all of that in there this is as much as possible. All right, so we're gonna add a teaspoon of our vanilla here. And yeah, you can use, I mean, you can use the imitation vanilla if you want, but I prefer, always best to use a real thing. So now we're about to add our eggs. We're gonna put the beatering back on. And then just like the sugar, we're gonna add the eggs one at a time. Cause like I said, butter can only absorb so much. And so just gonna wait, all those just get incorporated. You wanna add your egg. 
you want to use the three quarter rule. The three quarter rule is uh, usually when the egg is just about a three quarters of a way mixed in, then you want to add your next egg. So it's three quarters of a way mixed in. So we're going to add the next one. Okay, so now that all the wet ingredients, well, not all of them, because we still have our milk, but we are going to add our flour mixture and our milk, but we're gonna add them alternatively. Oh, so we're not gonna put time. Just gonna do half and half. So I'm gonna put half of the flour mixture. I uh, use vanilla drip, but I saved it though. And we're just gonna add half of the milk here, whole milk. And of course, we have to scrape our bowl here. Yep, as you see, there's a bunch of flour still in the corner of the bowl. This is why we do this. And we are just, up. yep, we are done. And you don't want to overmix these, or you don't want to overmix your cake. Typically, what happens if you overmix a cake, it be, uh, that causes tunneling. And that's another culinary term. Usually when you like see all those big, large holes and stuff in the side of the cake and stuff, that's a result of overmixing, and we like to call that tunneling. So now our cupcakes have been put in a cupcake pan. Um, I really wanted to do cupcakes today. For some reason, um, I don't know, I just didn't really feel like doing a whole cake. But yes, I have our cupcakes. Uh, cool thing is, they're smaller, not as much calories. Uh, they don't take this long to bake. These will take about 10 to 12 minutes on 350 degrees. So let's put them in the oven. So this is our buttercream frosting here. I made this the night before. So this is made with a few things here. So I have about a pound of confectioner's sugar. I also have one stick of unsalted butter. A, a teaspoon of vanilla extract, real vanilla, of course. Then I use a eight ounce pack of cream cheese, Philadelphia kind. And I actually use about three tablespoons of shortening. I think I like the shortening. It kind of, I feel like the shortening kind of holds the form of the frosting a bit better than the butter does. So I think it was a good idea that I put all of those in there. And I really like my frosting to be this thick because I find it it's easier to frost the cupcakes when you have frosting like this. Sometimes if you have frosting that it can be a little runny, um, it can be a little tough to get the sort of look you want because it's all gonna just look messy. But if you have uh, frosting that's just a bit too runny, uh, what I recommend is add more confectioner sugar just sort of eyeball it, you know, the more the merrier, actually. And uh, if you want, you can actually add about a teaspoon of cornstarch. That'll actually help thicken it up, too. And yay, our cupcakes are finally ready. So we're just gonna let them cool in the pan. I usually like to give them about 10 minutes. You can never have too much time to let them cool, honestly. And then we're gonna let them cool even further into our cooling rack here. The reason why we let these, we, let, we usually like to let our cakes cool is because they're carrying over. So carrying over is they're still cooking and then once, well, we're done, with, once the cakes are done carrying over, then it goes to the staling process. And the staling process is the finding, the final touches, everything is starting to give it that, you know, form. Like it, it'll actually taste like actual cake after that. That's what I'll say. So now that our cupcakes are completely cooled off, I am going to frost these with our frosting. Now I'm actually gonna pipe them. So right here, what we have is our piping. Uh, I forgot this one, I think it's a 23 inch piping round. This is typically used to pipe like shells and stuff. It's basically, in my opinion, one of the easiest ones to use. Unfortunately though, since I don't have my tripod with me, I cannot actually pipe if I hold the camera, so uh, sorry about that. But once I get my tripod back, I will do a tutorial on how to pipe. And here are our finished frosted cupcakes and I have these garnished with sprinkles because I think they look pretty cool. So yep, this is our yellow cake recipe here. 
and be on the lookout for more. I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do for my fifth vlog, but I'll get to it eventually. How about that?